a very good evening and namaskaram to all of you on behalf of sai art services i extend you all a warm welcome to today's one of its kind kacheri i would say trishakti featuring compositions of three contemporary women composers first a few words about sai art services which has been doing a yeoman service i would say it was established in the year 2009 and was registered as a non profit in november 2016 in the state of wisconsin usa the mission of sai art services is to primarily provide scholarship for underprivileged students design and disseminate steam programs that fill up the gaps in k12 and higher education to make science technology engineering art music and math more accessible to the community at large and foster classical arts through various concerts and workshops The founding directors of Sai Art Services are Professor Krishnan Suresh and Vanita Suresh and the other board members of directors are Deepika Rajesh Revathi Subramanyam and uh, Preeti Narsimhan and uh, there are also several other board members in this particular organization including prominent scientists musicians and art connoisseurs Sai Art Services has also been doing a great lot i would say for the cause of carnatic music and uh, it has also been annually honoring very senior musicians in the field through uh, with the venkatraman memorial award and uh, this award carries a purse of about a lakh and 8 rupees and a suitable title and uh, very befitting artists very senior artists have been given this prestigious award including mridanga maestro dr t k murthy mridanga maestro shri guruvayur durai violin maestro dr m chandra shekhar and last year Uh, recently then the last uh, december festival uh, veena maestro shrimati e gayatri was bestowed this award actually this uh, whole idea of the women composers took its uh, seeds were sown i would say at the time of the covid when we all got together you know to bring about or rather unearth all the women composers who have been there in fact uh, in our history we see that a lot is talked about all the men composers but there are also many many women composers who have been silently doing a lot of work in terms of composing right from the time of andal to the recent time contemporary composers so myself dr saumya and many others were part of this panel and we used to have an analytical study open discussion kind of panel discussion about all these uh, women composers and uh, all this has pro probably culminated into vanita bringing about this brilliant idea of presenting a whole concert based on contemporary women composers and uh, i think uh, she deserves a very big hand for this brilliant idea that has been generated and uh, the contemporary is the most important thing here for our concert today here where we'll be featuring three very very eminent musicians come composers that is another very big uh, uh, point to be noted that all the three composers that we are going to highlight today are internationally acclaimed musicians in their own right uh, kumari a kanya kumari then we have lal gudi shrimati vijay lakshmi and vidushi dr baby shriram whose composition are going to be featured here today and uh, we also would like to share that this is the first of the series and you can have many more to look forward to in future as well i'll just like to share a few things here in fact uh, this idea of my coming in here into this whole picture and trying to introduce the concept was something which developed later while listening to the compositions of various vagya karas it is indeed interesting and enriching from various aspects when we look at a composition Uh, we see the various aspect like raga the sahitya the thala then the construction of the composition etc with respect to past composers like especially the trinity and other composers of our uh, those who are not living now for that matter when we try to analyze these compositions it is more out of our own speculations i would say and out of our own understanding of music so there may be various interpretations even of the same composition in terms of looking at the sahitya or looking at the compositional structure because of the fact that they are no more with us to share their own thought process and we can make suggestive observations but of course we cannot get to know the thought process directly as visualized by the composer now the, when this concept of uh, trishakti took shape uh, i had a discussion with vanita and as to why not we give some insights about the compositions as heard directly from the composers themselves 
so that our musical enjoyment becomes multifold. And uh, this idea did seem very exciting to get to know the thought process of the composer from the composers themselves. And, happy, and I'm happy to share something about all, all of that. In fact, uh, I was also fortunate to interact with all these three composers. So it has been a very, very, uh, I would say, enriching experience for me also in terms of going into that thought process of the composer and seeing what goes into their mind when they compose. We all listen to the manodharma of the musician here, how they do alapana and other things. But seldom do we get to know how uh, Vagekara actually composes a composition. So that way, I thought that I will share something here. Today, Swarasmika Srikant will be presenting five gem compositions. The first one is going to be a Varnam of Srimati Lalgudi Vijayalakshmi in the Ragam Sahana. So, there are so many Varnas uh, there already. So, why Sahana? That was the first question which popped into my mind. So, when I was talking to her, she said that Sahana is one Ragam which I really love. And uh, I keep humming it to myself and uh, I've performed it in many concerts as well. So this idea of uh, Sahana was there in my mind for a long time and I felt that I must compose a Varnam in that. So sometimes she also mentioned that sometimes the melody and the Sahitya, they come hand in hand simultaneously. Sometimes what happens, the melody comes and then we put the words. But in the case of this particular Varnam, she shared that the melody and the Sahityam came to her on the spot. That is the first line got fixed and after that came the whole composition. So, yento vediti na chintala dircha radha dayaleda. This was the starting line. And she also got the melody fixed for this. And after that, when she sat through and she created this whole Varnam in Telugu. This is on the Ambal Pravridha Srimati in Lalgudi. And in the Charanam, you see, Bharamma Amma Nannu Brova Niku. That is the Charana line. And uh, throughout the composition, you can sense how the Bhava of the Ragam, the Sahityam, the Swaras all complement each other so beautifully. And especially if you look, uh, I was also listening to all these compositions uh, multiple times to see what I could figure out of these compositions. So in the second Charnam, generally we see that we focus on certain particular notes. So Ri and uh, Ni, which are very pivotal to the Sahana Ragam, has been given a beautiful focus in the second Charnam of this Varnam. Why I am sharing all this is that this is not yet another concert. It's a very special concert. So where we are presenting very special compositions. So knowing a little bit about the background of these compositions definitely makes the listening a very enriching experience. After the Varnam, uh, Swarat Mika will be presenting another composition of Srimati Lalgudi Vijay Lakshmi. This is going to be in Tamil in praise of Lord Ganapati. Tattad Dimi Yen Radum Ganapati. This is in the Ragam Nate Kuranji in Adi Tala. And uh, here also Srimati Vijayalakshmi shared that this uh, she visualized the dancing Ganapati in her mind and that is how this composition came. Uh, I probably I was also thinking about the Sri Ganapatini where in the end uh, we uh, get to know about the dancing Ganapati's feel we get in the last part of the Charanam. So probably because all of us draw inspiration somewhere and that is how our imagination after that gets crystallized through a composition. And uh, she says it is fascinating to visualize the Nartana Ganapati dancing gracefully. And she says I love this form of the Ganapati. And here you see that the lyrics there is a beautiful prasa element attached to it. And uh, what is very, very beautiful about the composition is that Tatta Dimi, that particular phrase starts off in the Tishram and then after that the Sahityam flows into the Chatushram. And another beauty is that the Sol Tatta Dimi again here, lot of variations on the phrase Tatta Dimi is a very interesting aspect to observe. So when you listen to the Pallavi, I request you all to please keenly observe how she has adopted so many variations on that Tatta Dimi to give you that feel of the beautiful dance of the Ganapati. And the Charanam, Nityane Yana Vittane Nal Buddhiyum Vidayum Vendinin. That's how she says. And here also she made a specific mention about the Atti Ganapati. Atti Ganapati is supposed to be one form of the Ganapati which has got a lot of power and positive energy. And he bestows whatever boon we ask for. So she says that I took the liberty in this song to ask Ganapati to pause in his dance. See how beautiful the composer can imagine things. He is dancing away, abandonedly, he is doing a beautiful dance. So here in the Charam, she requests the Ganapati, 
do please pause for some time in your dance sit under this cool athik tree and grant your blessings so these are the two compositions of shrimati lalgudi vijayalakshmi with which she'll be opening the next two compositions she'll be presenting are of dr baby shriram and we are extremely honored to have her here amidst us as an audience a very very simple and unassuming person uh, many of you would not have even realized that she's come that is the kind of person but please don't estimate her uh, sangeeta gyanam with that because that is like a mighty ocean absolutely mighty ocean just like you cannot see the end of the ocean or the sky her imaginative skills her manodharma in terms of composing is absolutely incredible i would say and uh, believe me she started composing at the age of 10 at the age of 10 we just start learning music but she has already started composing a lot of songs mm -hmm. and she has composed about 200 compositions for your information and uh, what is very very significant here is the wide genre that she has covered because kriti is something to my understanding is a very easy form that many of us resort to but she has composed geetam swarajati aadi taala varnam ada taala varnam padam javali tillana and uh, what a versatile person she is in terms of language as well where she has used sanskrit tamil hindi and malayalam to compose her compositions apart from this hindi bhajans hindi and uh, urdu mixed ghazals have also been composed and she is a perfect challenger i would say where when we go through a normal routine path she chooses the untreaded path i would say and that is where she finds all the excitement and that excitement she wants to share with her rasikas as well so she has explored many many new ragas like charu kuntalam amara sena priya komalangi ambashri sunad vinodini mahalakshmi i would just like to share a few words about the two compositions that are going to be featured here today the first one will be madavan marigane again in a very very rare ragam charu kuntalam and she says that in 1996 uh, she composed this the idea to compose this particular composition came to her you must be wondering what charu kuntalam is to put it very simply it is charu kesi minus the panchamam so panchama varjyam makes it charu kuntalam but it is not as easy when it is sounded to you as a composition you would see the complexities that she has brought in beautifully into this particular composition हेलो द फर्स्ट कंपोजिशन एज वाज मेंशनिंग इज इन द रागम चारु कुंतलम व्हिच इज अ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ चारु केसी एंड एज आई वाज मेंशनिंग अर्लियर आल्सो द चारु केसी विद द पंचम वर्ज्य मेक्स दिस रागम नाउ Uh, again this is a beautiful anecdote she shared with me and i thought i must share with you 
because these are all things which really add much towards our listening process itself in terms of why did that composer compose that way or what was it that was in the mind of the composer when she did it so she says that uh, when they got married at that time i mean all the time the husband and wife duo keep practicing all the time and uh, in the facebook you would get wonderful glimpses of this jugal bandi that they keep doing on and off and uh, um in that context you are saying that uh, um, shri ram is very fond of all these nadaswara pidis and you would have also observed how what he is another super genius all of us know and uh, where avaroda mugathile or bhavam irukada onnu irukada ana brigagal patta na sara sarama avar apdi or periya pattas mari vedichu uttu irupar nabulukku so for us you know it is like uh, you will be just uh, it will be mind boggling as to how somebody can do that breathless breathless la solrom avar pandra breathless la patta na nijamave veppa irukum so what she was uh, sharing was very interesting that he is a master in all these nadaswara pidi and very fast brigas and f- phrases so she used to counter attack it was a very healthy attack of course a very positive way where she used to sing a lot of panchama varjya phrases and ragas and she would also sing a lot of jarus so in that context this uh, charu kesi minus the pa that particular uh, uh, scale was always in her mind and she used to keep on singing that and uh, one day they were singing that uh, particular uh, scale and then after that uh, shri ram went off to his recording but this particular scale was haunting her again, again and again and that is what led her to compose this particular composition madavan marugane in this particular ragam here again you would see that there are many many beautiful aspects which need special attention the first of course is that the beauty of the ragam has been focused so beautifully where you see that when the ragam is devoid of panchama we know that the ma and the dha need to be given their prime focus how very alternately between the madhyama and the dhaivata she focuses the entire composition to give us that beautiful feel of the ragam then there have been many swara sahitya patterns you can observe in this swara sahitya of course immediately we think of shama sastri and his family so that aspect she has handled there is also madhyama kala sahitya akin to a muttu swami diksha their composition and uh, we see that here also in the anupallavi again swaraksharas abound in this like in ma davan ma dha the first two uh, syllables itself are swaraksara then ni dai in the anupallavi ni and dha they also have a swaraksara like this in the charanam also you would see a number of swaraksharas uh, embedding this particular composition and uh, of course she very modestly acknowledges also that i didn't create this ragam obviously nobody can create these ragams because in the text we find all these permutation combination already there so once she got the scale she t- uh, checked up and found that it was charu kuntalam and that's how this uh, particular composition came about in this the second composition is absolutely meditative and so beautiful i'm sure all of you will enjoy it to the fullest in the ragam revati and revati again generally we regale it to the tukada part where we have some small compositions but here is a really very very classy piece ariya dadeno in a beautiful serene and meditative mood she has done and here again you will see that lot of musical stuff has been packed it is not just yet another kriti and uh, for that also again she shared very beautifully with me, with me that during a tutelage under her guru shri tm tyagarajan he was a, another great maestro uh, many i mean now we don't even the younger generation don't talk much about also all these stalwarts but he was one of the past masters who was so brilliant and uh, so prolific uh, as a musician as a teacher as a composer so being inspired by him she says that i compose this particular composition and so you would also see the tmt touch in many of these places in this particular composition the concluding one the piece we are going to listen today i would say is a crowning glory a beautiful tillana of kumari a kanya kumari and this is called trishakti tillana she has called it trishakti tillana and it is a ragamalika tillana and the ragam kannada vasanti and shiva shakti again now going into the thought process of the composer why should you compose in three ragams and why did she choose kannada vasanti and shiva shakti any thought on this well i will let you know what she felt when she composed this particular thing she says that it was a tribute of kanya kumari amma herself to her guru ml vasanta kumari and the parama guru gnb so kannada in that k a n is a part of her name kanya kumari 
and then vasanthi stands for ml vasanthi kumari and uh, the final one vasanthi that is she has composed the second uh, ragam in that and shiva shakti of course all of us know is a ragam created by shri gn bala subramanyam the parama guru so the combination of kannada vasanthi and shiva shakti symbolizes the great tribute of kanyakumari amma to her guru and parama guru and then here in this particular tillana she has also composed many many tillanas we come to know that she has composed many tillanas and western based pieces for instruments and she also shared that her first tillana was in the ragam yamuna kalyani i just want to share a few things about this particular tillana which is bright and catchy and has a incorporation of intricate rhythmic patterns and there's a beautiful sroto vahayati uh, that is sroto vaha means small to big in uh, uh, if you want to know it very simply sroto vaha means the source of the river to how it branches to become a big river and uh, it moves on so starting in a small phrase and then multiplying like that so sroto vaha yati you can see in the pallavi very beautifully in the first section itself how by adding the jatis one by one one by one she creates a beautiful sroto vaha yati here and then pallavi it is interesting to see how the yati patterns blossoms with every phrase in its various combination in ascending order and beauty both in the melody and laya in the anupallavi beautifully from the kannada you will see that the song glides into the vasanthi ragam and uh, here vasanthi we know is a very very serene kind of a ragam so that she has captured so beautifully here the notes combine here again to give a canvas of permutation combination and glides smoothly and uh, again uh, typically like a ragamalika form where the same vasanthi phrase that particular avartanam first time it takes the phrase gari gapada which is so akin to the uh, vasanthi ragam and the same phrase ends in maga madani which is uh, typically a phrase of kannada and then it flows back into the pallavi of the kannada uh, that is the first portion and in the charanam she has used very simple kind of uh, lyrics very communicative lyrics but then when you hear it now from swaratmika you will see how the shiva shakti ragam takes its focus here and how it flows so beautifully through the whole charanam passage madhura meenakshi kanchi kamakshi kashi vila vishalakshi kripa judare karunim pave shiva shakti swarupu laina swarupu laina where the shiva shakti the raga mudra also comes in here and in the last part of this particular tillana you would see a beautiful corvey culminating into a 5 into 3 combination three times the grand finale which we would say which uh, com- completes that particular tillana so it's a 5 into 3 combination once first coming in the reverse order that is typically again of a diksha ragamalika where you would see that when the, in the chaturdash ragamalika when there are 14 ragas you come back from the 14 then 13 12 like that you come to the first so similarly that that concept has been adopted so where the corvey 5 uh, into 3 times that is happening first time it is in the ragam shiva shakti second time in the ragam vasanthi and third time it moves on and it uh, flows seamlessly into the kannada and then it goes into the pallavi and finishes off so this is a very very interesting uh, tillana that you're going to listen to here so i'm in fact uh, very much i feel uh, honored and privileged to be able to share with you the thought processes of these uh, great composers in fact idha namakku konja nenachi paatha romba bramipada irukum enaka tyagarajar epdi nenchirparo deekshadar epdi nenchirparo shama sastra epdi pannirkalamo idha yen epdi panna namba othothru onnu yogikarthoda idhila vanda the composer e nammalukku vandu idha solli adu yen ava ad compose panna yen epdi panna edarkaga panna adha enna or musical thought process irukengartha namba therinjindu inikku indha kacheri kekkarodu i think it will be a lot more meaningful and enriching for us and that's why i pitched in in the last moment and said that i will share something about this composition otherwise it will be another kacheri like anything else and probably you will miss to note the finer nuances which are embedded in these compositions and they do require a special attention from our end so that was the whole idea of this uh, presentation here and uh, for swaratmika i think it was a double dhamaka in terms of learning the composers directly from these bagekaras i i came to know that she had the good fortune of learning from them so that way i think uh, she is very privileged namba yaru tyagarajara diksha thattu poi inna kattuk mudiyadu so namba vandu ava paramparala yaartiyo kattukrom alla nariya maatrangal varudhu illa nariya paadandra bedam varudhu ella varudhu ore or session dr baby oda kattundada she just shared with me 
uh, I also understand your responsibilities as a learner, as a student, because unlike a Tyagaraja Kriti or a Dikshar Kriti, where we, I mean, he didn't give us the liberty. We take the liberty of adding some Sangati here and there. Ingo Briga Paul Lama, Uru silence, so Kara Gurta Pur, ordinary, every film and la, Ida Namloda mind as a musician. Odo. So Inga the Avala Pandamudia, I could see that even the smallest nuances of Konja Mati Tana. So there, I think it is a lot of uh, discipline in terms of learning from the composer themselves. And it's also a lot of restraint for the learner because she cannot go beyond what the guru is telling here because the guru is also the composer. So this was a very interesting, all put together, I think this particular concept today is really, really very interesting for me, for the Resikas for the performers, for everybody here. So, uh, and we also have a wonderful team accompanying her here today. VSP Gayatri Shivani on the violin, accompanying Swaratmika Srikan. Adudurai Shri Guru Prasad, accompanying on the Mridangam. Shri Shivaramakrishnan, accompanying on the Ganjira. And I'm sure this is going to be one of the most wonderful, enriching, and memorable evening musically for all of you. Thank you very much. Namaskar. I'll be presenting a Varnam in Raga Sahana, which is a composition of um, Srimati Lal Gudi Vijay Lakshmi Aunty. <coughs>
Next, I'll be presenting a composition of Lal Guli Vijayakshmi Akka um, in Raga Nata Kurunji, <coughs> set to Thala Mahadi. Mm.
Next, I'll be presenting the composition of Srimati Devi Shiramati. In the Ragam Charu Kundalam, set to Thalam Misha Chapo.
Yeah. <laughs>
Next, I'll be presenting Ariyada Deno, which is also a composition of Shrimati Devi Shiramanti. In the Ragam Arevati, Saito Tharam Khanda Chapo. Ariyad de no oh Ariyad de no umadarumai kanda Ariyad de no umadarumai kanda Ariyad Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
मधुर मीनाक्षी मधुर मीनाक्षी कंचिका मधुर मीनाक्षी कंचिका क 
Shubha Dinavu, 